Let us walk through a great plugin for Adobe Illustrator that gives you the right tools to create embroidery files right within your familiar vector graphic software, Adobe Illustrator. We will show you the concept of work, tools, and settings Embroidery iSquare offers to create great embroidery designs. We will work with a design that we created in Adobe Illustrator. It's a typical left chest design that has a logo and some text in different colors and uh, outlines around it. If you go to the menu window, you see there are embroidery I square related uh, tools. So make sure you activate all of them, design palette, path properties, path type, and view settings. It's always good to have them visible on screen, so group them and have them in one window as tabs. In the menu object, you also have embroidery ice crew related uh, tools. You have embroidery ice crew generate selection, generate all, auto digitizer, and auto start stop. As well, on the left hand side, you have tools that are beat, the beats edit tool, angle lines tool, slice lines tool, text edit tool stitch select tool and design start stop tool. If you don't see them, click on the three dots below and make sure that they are activated. Then you will see them in, uh, as tools on the left hand side of your screen. It's great to have the eyeball uh, to switch on and off or hide and show segments and layers. Now here in our particular design, you can see that the, the concept of drawing a design is having embroidery in mind already. And this has to do with the sequence of the segments. You should always have those segments that are underneath uh, being in first position and then those segments that are on top, sitting on top of it. So in this case, we have like the black uh, flames and the black background. On top of that, we have green text boxing. Around the green text boxing, we have a white outline. After that, we have, again, uh, text lucky in green color. Around uh, that text, we have a white outline. Then we have a red part of the glove. On top of that, we have a couple of white uh, shadowy segments, a black segment, then a white uh, part uh, which is a glove part and on top of that black gray and green text lucky now the way how to work is just hide all the segments that you are not uh, working at the moment and just show the segment that you are going to work with in this case the black uh, shape of the flames so we will select that segment and in the embroidery path type window, you have various tools to convert shapes into stitches. In this case, we will choose uh, conversion to complex fill. Once the shape is converted to complex fill, we will use the angle lines tool in order to move the angle line in the direction that we wish. We can also change the settings of that complex fill. For example, the pattern type will change it to smooth and accessing uh, segment settings well, by clicking on the three lines on the top right corner of your window there. Let's add uh, some underlay. For example, we in this case, we will switch on the outline and the lattice underlays change the density of the lattice on the late three millimeters then we will also access the the pull compensation settings and make sure we have an absolute pull compensation let's choose a value of 0 0.5 millimeters we apply 
and you can see that the stitches now are extending by 0.5 millimeters, maybe a little bit too much, so let's change that to 0.3 millimeters. Once we are done with that very first segment, we continue with the next one, and that's the black shadow shape behind text Lucky boxing. We convert that to complex fill, and again here we choose the angle lines tool in order to change the, the angle of the complex field. We will go into the segment settings, change the pattern type to be smooth, then go to the pull compensation settings and apply the same settings we had done for the flames. Okay, 0 0.3, absolute. Then we will go to the underlay settings and right there, we activate the outline underlay and the lattice underlay. Density of the underlay, the lattice underlay to three millimeters. Now we have the consistent, consistent same settings as the flame. Once we're done with that, we move forward to the next segments. In this case, text boxing in green color, we will uh, show them, show those segments and select all of them and you see we will convert those to auto satin paths, so basically into satin stitches. The system does it in, in one shot, did a decent job generating the stitches there. It, it does, uh, it applies angle lines and slice, slice parts of, uh, of the shapes automatically. Now what we do next is with the slice lines tool we will edit the slice lines the way we want to have them. In this case of in case of the B as an example you have seen I changed the slice line the system generated to be a different one. I, I wanted to slice the top part uh, from the bottom part in a different way. After that we use the angle lines tool and we start to edit the angle lines. For example, if you want to delete an angle line, you just uh, shift and um, shift and click on a beat, an angle line beat. If you want to add angle lines, you click and drag an angle line from one side of the shape to the other. And to move, of course, you click just on the beat and, and drag it and move it to the place you want to have it. We are done with the uh, letter B and we will continue with the letter O there, doing the same, the same task, moving angle lines, adding angle lines and deleting angle lines. Letter O is done. You see there letter X, the slice line was uh, rather large there not really slicing the way I wanted to have that. So we change that and now we work on the angle lines. Move fast forward. So it's the same concept for each one of these letters. See here a slice line of, of the letter N, the main bold part uh, is slicing from the uh, from the little columns on the left and right hand side and then we move to the letter G and also here edit the angle lines so once this is done have the, the stitches, the satin stitches, the way we like to have them, then we will select all of the letters belonging to a boxing text there, and we will make sure to access the, the quality control settings. There is uh, something called automatic overlap, a setting called automatic overlap, and we will change it from 2 millimeters to 
tree. So what this does, if we zoom in here a little bit, you can see we have stitches that are overlapping, going from one column into the other. You can see that uh, right there in the X, for example, you see those are like stitches uh, extending or going into the, the bold part of the X on the top right. And on the bottom left, basically the bold part is extending into the, into the thin part. So the system is uh, intelligent enough to decide which way to go. What we will also apply here are underlays. So in this case, an, a contour, another contour parallel underlay and a perpendicular one. What this does is those stitches, the underlay stitches are sitting underneath the, uh, the satin stitches. And this will make the, the text embroidered uh, to look a little bit bolder. Then let's go to the object menu. And here you have a tool called Auto Start Stop Tool. So with all the text uh, or all the letters selected, what it does, it will automatically move the exit and entry beads from one letter to the other to the closest point connection. This is done automatically, as you can see here, between the O and the X, and uh, the exit beads were shown in red color and the start beads of segments in green color. What we'll, we'll also do now here is for all this text, uh, all these letters we want, uh, in case you don't want to have connection, thread connection, you apply trim commands. And with trim commands, we also need to make sure that we have lock stitches at the beginning and the end of those letters, those segments, in order for the thread to not unravel when uh, the garment is being washed. So those lock stitches are important and that's their job. Let's have a look how the lock stitches look like. We'll zoom in here and with the stitch select tool, First of all, I select the B, but then uh, with the stitch select tool, let's uh, go and select the stitch close to the end of the B. So you see one of the stitches coming close to the end, and then I travel forward. And you see here, right there, there is this, this little three, four, four, five stitches are lock stitches at the end of the B, and at the beginning of the next letter, O, we also have lock stitches because between those two letters we have trim and that's why it's important to have lock stitches uh, on each one of those letters. You can see at the beginning of the O we have this like a little knot. Great. And once we are done with the text boxing, then the next segments are the what we see here, it's the white outline around the, the green text. So those segments, we will convert them, that outline, into steel stitches. Steel stitches are satin stitches with the consistent, consistent uh, width. You see there in the path type, we convert this to steel and then values for the width, the steel width, we change that to 1.3 to be a little bit thin, thinner. And now we have all those white segments converted to steel. Now for the inside part of letter B, those steel stitches are look a little bit congested. And what we'll do here is we'll select both of them and change the width to slightly to be a slightly uh, thinner value 1.2 millimeters and I will also make sure that the insert percentage is uh, going a little bit to the outside in order to make sure that uh, the void area in the middle opens up a little bit so we give uh, give the uh, design a better chance to have that void area showing up whenever you see areas that where stitches are not generated the way you like them, you can always use the other illustrator tools like the pen tool, the anchor, anchor tool, 
in order to move anchors, add anchors. And also here you can see, for example, sharp corners, turn sharp corners into more rounded corners. This is to, to uh, give the, uh, the stitches a chance to, to travel smooth, uh, in a smoother way. Like here, this part of the end, which is quite spiky, we move those anchor, that anchor point a little bit more up there that one as well so we are moving them away from the from the corner and then with a pen tool we will add two anchors one here and one there then we go to the the anchor tool and we convert that area into sharp but we will we will uh, move the the corner to be instead to be a spiky corner to be a more arced corner that's how we can uh, can make sure that the stitches generate better in that air in those kind of sharp areas now for the g we will do the same as we did for letter b the inside uh, areas we will make it thinner the steel 1.2 millimeters and change the inset percentage that looks good. Let's have a look at the view settings 3D preview. You can see there we have thread connection between the, the little parts inside B and the O from the outside to the inside. Now in order to you know, get rid of those thread connections we will apply uh, trim commands. Trim commands and also make sure we have lock stitches. So selecting all the white steel segments, we will apply trim command at the end of the segments and make sure we have lock stitches applied to them as well at the beginning and at the end of each one of those segments. And now the 3D preview, you can see no more thread connections. Now this looks good. The next parts, as we can see in the sequence view, we have text lucky in, uh, in green color. We will convert those segments into a satin path or satin paths. Therefore, we select all of the segments, all of the letters and click on the auto satin path tool. This will convert each one of these letters into satin. All right, once this is done, we'll zoom in, we have a clear view, and now we'll go through each one of the letters and edit, use the same process as we explained before, edit angle lines and slice lines. We're done with the letter L. And uh, let's move fast forward. The concept of editing is, is always the same. Edit slice lines, edit angle lines. Now with the letter A, you can see I can save time. I, if I edit one of the A's, I can use the edited one and I just copy paste it to to the other location and this is how I can save time. Then we continue with letter K, it looks good. And at the end we have the letter A, uh, sorry I. Once that is done we also have a white outline around that text. We will convert that white outline to steel stitches as we have done with uh, with the boxing white outline we use the same values the width 1.3 millimeters then if there are 
let's say sharp corners or stitches where they are not turning nicely we can use the Adobe Illustrator tools in order to add anchors, move anchors, convert anchors to give better results with the stitches. Okay, that looks good. Then we will take care of the two little white triangles inside the letter letters A. We will convert them to satin. So we will place the angle lines. Then we will select the the other part, the other triangle, and convert that one to satin as well. Dragging one angle line and dragging the second angle line. Now those parts are really tiny and it's a good idea to add some pull compensation here. Go into the segment settings, the pull compensation part we convert it to pull compensation absolute and use a, a value. Let's use 0 0.2 millimeter. Maybe it can be a little, more, a little bit more subtle. Let's use 0 0.17 millimeters. And then in order to, mm, to avoid to have thread connections there, we we'll make sure we have the, the trim commands and, uh, and also lock stitches applied to those segments. In 3D view we can make sure that uh, no thread connections are there. Next segment is the red shape here which is uh, the background uh, part of the glove. We we'll convert that one to complex fill. Again we use the angle line tool in order to change the angle line and that looks good in the direction we want to have it. We want to add uh, underlays here, contour and lattice. A little bit uh, too heavy, two millimeters. So let's change that to to three millimeters. Okay, that looks good. Full lattice. Okay, we have more like a fishnet that gives us more stability. Once that is done, we have the next segments, which are, you see the larger white shapes there. We have three larger white shapes and two smaller ones. So the larger ones, uh, we will convert those to complex fill and the smaller ones, we will convert those segments uh, to satin. It's always like a, a guideline. If you have medium to large size shapes, you can convert them to complex fill and the smaller medium ones to satin. Now you see those three medium larger shapes we converted them to complex fill and then we accommodate a stitch angle for that part of the glove. And the other parts that are sitting on, on top of the red complex field, it's always good to have a, a stitch angle that is opposing in an opposing direction compared to the stitches sitting below. Now the two other white segments, which are smaller, as we mentioned before, we will convert them to satin. And we use the auto satin path tool. And once that is done, we also work on, we edit the angle lines here. Then we move to the other part here. You see this is a branch segment, it's, it's sliced. Okay, these angles look good. And in order to, uh, to have the intersection where the sliced uh, satin parts are located, we will add the automatic on automatic automatic overlap, in this case uh, 1.3 millimeters. And you can see this will this will add uh, or extend nicely stitches uh, so that they are covered up properly. 
and now we'll also make sure we have a nice solid underlay under the, that white part complex fill so we use a full lattice four millimeters density is good and we will also select all of those white segments and make sure we have trim commands and uh, and lock stitches activated Once that is done, we can hide those segments and that's, well, let's switch on, show the red complex fill and you see there is a black uh, segment sitting on top of that and there's also a black segment which is sitting on top of the white complex fill which I have hidden so far. We will convert those two segments to satin and then, as usual, we will edit the uh, the angle lines, in this case that part also has a slice line. We'll get rid of that slice line, you can see that now we have just one intersecting part. The angle lines look good and we will work on that little black part as well. Okay, those stitches look good to me. All right, now we will switch on. There is one gray segment, which is also sitting on, you see now I switch on the, the white uh, complex fill. We will convert the, that gray segment to satin, adding angle lines. Looks good. And then we access the segment settings and we will apply underlay perpendicular and we have two perpendicular lines looks okay all right so we have those parts now then we have a black shape around the glove and we will convert that one to satin stitch. So let's select it and use the auto satin path tool. Stitches are converted, converted to satin and for in order for the intersecting parts uh, to, to be covered up nicely we will use the uh, quality control and uh, automatic overlap and also we will make sure that we have uh, um, lock stitches. This is the automatic overlap. The lock stitches, we have added them or applied them at the beginning and at the end of the segment. Good, this is done. Now we are coming to the last part, which is the green text. This is a really small text, uh, Lahti. We will convert those uh, letters to satin. Therefore, let's select all of them and click on the Auto Satin Path tool. We have our satin stitches there. And as we did before, we will now edit the the uh, angle lines and also for those that just that have slice lines, slice lines. Okay, we are done with letter H and the uh, top part of the T you see here we accommodate the angle lines so that they are in a nice direction in a consistent direction the letter I is a is a is a branch satin so the dot is connected with the main part and we'll make sure that the dot angles the stitch angles are in an opposite direction compared to the main part Let's have a look at the uh, 3D settings. 
looks good to me. We're getting there. Now let's uh, show all of the segments we have converted so far. Let's add now an arc text on top of uh, this logo. We will use the pen tool, Adobe Illustrator's pen tool, make a straight path there. And then we will use the, uh, the anchor or that tool in order to change the line path into a more arced path. So after that, we select that path and in the uh, embroidery paths type, window we convert you see there is a conversion tool called text we convert that path into text and we change the settings here the values change the text for example to to be head coach and the height the text height to 12 millimeters then we open up the font list all these fonts are embroidery fonts available to you let's choose a nice uh, font there head coach and we will move it slightly up so that it's nicely above the, the glove and uh, in order to to make it more visually uh, to show up visually we will move the the light blue background square a little bit up there all right looks good now with the text segment selected we will add some uh, some uh, trim commands it's there so this looks good so far now let's have a look at the at the 3d view that's how it looks and the view settings we have a couple of uh, of tools there we have the show stitch points the show stitch commands and 3d view so you see these are the commands that are showing up a little scissors there and this is the so show stitch points that will show or hide stitches then in the embroidery design palette this is where you can change the thread colors for example needle number one uh, top text we change the needle number one and let's also change the thread itself clicking on on that little symbol you can access various thread manufacturers this case let's choose one of them and one of the colors within that thread palette and assign it to that uh, text portion all right on the left hand side we have uh, uh, the beats tool the beats tool is if you have a, a segment selected you can see the red beads which are the exit points of that segment and you also see a, a green bead that's the entry point of the segment and you can change them manually just select the segment and then click on the bead for example the exit bead and move it to the position you want to have to have it so this is how you can manually change the entry and exit beads of segments if you want to do it automatically you just select uh, all of the segments that uh, you want to move entry and exit beat, beats to the closer point connection in the object menu that's the function where you have the auto start stop tool so what this does it will automatically place the start and entry beats to the closest point connection In the file menu, we have 
embroidery i square export this is where you save your embroidery file so the pxf file is the native pulse outline file and if you are going to stitch it on your embroidery machine that's when you choose the for example the tajima tbf file format that's the file that you would create in order to to load it and send it to your machine good and at the end we also let's have a look at the in the file menu you have uh, some print embroidery i squared print tools there print design info and print design print design info is the design worksheet this gives you the instructions of the, the needle sequence and the needle colors and the print design tool that's the tool where you print the design itself thank you very much that was a, a brief tutorial uh, for the adobe illustrator embroidery i square plugin